Welcome, everybody, to the Badasses of Blood Bowl. This is our second season of uh, some of our nonsense. Last season, we had the Come and Get It competition, which is now completed. The uh, the winner of that one was Nurgle's Leftovers. They are the undead. Uh, it's a little confusing because they're not a Nurgle team. They're an undead team, but uh, they are the Leftovers. Anyway, you also had in that the Surwater Sallies, the Seattle Slither, and the Thunder Nuts. And they will be returning to this one, the bloodiest competition... And it's going to be round robin again, and we have returning with us the Skaven Surawater Sallies, it's the Lizardman Seattle Slithers, the Undead Nurgle's Leftovers, or the Champions last time, the Dwarf Thundernuts, and the Chaos Beast Friends, as well as the Nurgle Puss and Pestilence. Now this is going to be the uh, competition that begins uh, with the next episode of right now. We're going to go through these teams and just kind of see... Uh, who they are and, uh, you know, what they got from last time and where we expect them to go. All right, this is the Skaven team, the Surawater Sallies. Uh, they lost a lot of uh, players last season, which is sort of uh, want to do with uh, the Skaven. They're usually not, pretty, not very tough. They get injured pretty easily, get uh, killed pretty easily, and I think they lost at least three members were killed last season. Uh, got, had a lot of injuries and that sort of thing, but still came out in second, so uh, you're good, we're going to see them kind of rebuilding. Their team value is 1,020, so they have gone up by 20. Uh, you started at a 1,000. Their coach is Beer Belly, he's level 2, and their, their slogan is, Pew, what stinks so bad? Oh, that's us. Let's take a look at the team here. You've got Snowball as a Rat Ogre, and then you got Spot as a Thrower. They had two throwers. Uh, but one of them got killed, I think it was one of the gutter runners also got killed, or was it, yeah, no, uh, let's see, actually it looks like they have a, let's see, they have three gutter runners, yeah, so one of those was killed, and gutter runners are usually the, uh, best players for the, uh, Skaven. They're all about dodging and speed, which is what the Skaven are all about, so, that will be hurting them this season. Uh, they, their star player, though, is one of the, uh, gutter runners, it's Beethoven, or Beethoven, as, uh, as we might call them. Uh, they, uh, all gutter runners begin with the dodge ability, but as he's gone, but since he's their star player, he's gone up one, and he's gotten the ability to catch uh, really good. Uh, that sounded very unprofessional, but anyway. And so there is their star player. Uh, they've also got a couple of cheerleaders, a team reroll, an apothecary, some raised fan factor and uh, coach assistant. So they're actually doing pretty good. And rather than getting more players and refilling, they've gotten some of those. I don't know how wise that is, considering the fact that uh, uh, Skaven oftentimes lose their, their players, and so they really need to be deep. Right now, I think they have just enough to uh, fill the field. All right, let's look at the Seattle Slither. S Seattle Slithers, I believe. They are Lizardmen, and there is their team. Their team value is 960, which is sort of surprising that it's gone down. I mean, I know they had horrible, horrible luck last season, um, but I don't remember them losing players. Maybe some of them are injured. Let's take a look. Oh, by the way, they're uh, actually, I should real quick say, their coach is Junior4888. He's still level one, uh, and <laughs> their motto is Interteam Motto. Apparently didn't uh, do much of that, and I think they just took the regular names that were there already. As for star player, they've got... Tehemic She. Any of you lizard people out there who are hearing me, I my apologies for uh, bad pronunciations. Uh, let's see. Uh, he had block already, I believe, and so his. Uh, not sure what he's gotten as his special thing. I guess passing looks like it went up and agility went up. Anyway, he's. Uh, I hope they haven't uh, skipped that as well. Here's what uh, his past has been. Uh, been doing. He got a lot of blocks, which is really what kind of, I think, made him successful, made, gave him the uh, the star player sort of status. Uh, let's see here. So, that's their one star player. They have another one coming up here, Zopek, and it looks like he's uh, also of the same type. Soros, yeah, Soros, he's, he's strong, his big guys are the ones doing well. Uh, he's got a cheerleader, a couple of team roles couple of fan factors there and a coaching assistant. He might need those team re-rolls because he just had really bad luck last season. But he did come in third rather than last. All right, on to the champion from last season. We have Nurgle's Leftovers. Their team value is 990 as well. Now, I am confused by these numbers because the uh, Surawater Sallies were the ones that lost players, but yet they're the ones whose uh, uh, team value has gone up uh, while, the other, uh, while the champion actually went down, which seems odd to me. But anyway... 
the coach's dust off. He is also level one, uh, and their um, their team lo slogan is "Ha! You think we are dead? Well, maybe we are." Uh, the team roster for those for this team. Let's take a look. Where is their? Well, let's see. But as for what they have, Stefan the Demon Hunter, Thorgrim the Vanquisher, Tutmos the Embalmed. Oh, so they have some nice names: Stein, Spine Slicer, all that. Uh, a couple of whites, a mummy, uh, several ghouls. So he has a, a full mixture here. Skeleton and a lot of zombies. He's mostly concentrating on zombies. He only, he's only got one skeleton there. Uh, the rest of these guys are zombies. Actually, some of these are from other teams. When you died playing against a different team, that they uh, got resurrected. Or if you, when you died playing against this team, that uh, your player would, uh, would... If your player died while playing this team, I'll put it that way. If your player died while uh, playing against this team, it came back as the undead on his team. This is one of the examples. This was uh, Crum was one of the Skaven. He got killed while playing the undead, and so he came back as that. So you're going to start seeing a lot of players from other teams coming back as as this. Uh, let's see. I don't see any star players. I'm counting a star player anybody who leveled up, but uh, they're still all you know below six. I think what's happened the because he was doing well with his whole team rather than just a couple players. I uh, it got spread out more. So with uh, the others, you'll probably notice all the points went into one or two players, whereas here it went into a multitude of them. So like uh, Aeolus Bone Collector is about to go out of, of the next level, and Krenin, uh, uh, Cranium Basher is about to, uh, and Carrion Grinder is about to. So yeah, you have, I mean, there are, all three of those are one point away from going up to the second level. So right now he's going to start off with a lower... Uh, uh, oh, what do you call it? None of the guys are going to be like a, a super great, but they're all just about there. And like very soon, you're going to see a bunch of his players become uh, star players. Uh, right, anyway, he's got two team uh, re rolls, uh, three on a fan factor, and a necromancer, which I think is their way. Was he once per match if a player on the opposing team with strength four or less that does not have regeneration or stinty is killed? And you may place a new zombie player. Yeah, there you go. So that's where they take them. He also, actually, one of these should be, I think, a lizard man. Quintos Marobane, Carrion Grinders. Because ones with the, those kinds of names were definitely started from here. Uh, the ones with kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, the names that sound like they're from uh, natives of South America, that would be, that, uh, that would be uh, from the Lizardmen. But I don't really see any, so they might have gotten killed after, I mean, might have been killed and joined the uh, undead, and then got gotten killed again. I see Iola's bone uh, catcher has lost some agility there. He's uh, taken an injury that is probably permanent. All right, on to the Thunder Nuts, which is the dwarf team. Here they are now. Yeah, their team value has gone up. They are at 1,100. They probably do, it's probably due to having a uh, star player. That's where it comes on. Uh, it is coached by uh, Vince, uh, Vince Bombardi, and he's still level one, which surprised me. And his, uh, his slogan is, Our nuts in your butts, which I think is very appropriate for a dwarf. All right, so over here to their team roster, they've got a couple of runners, which, you know, runner for a dwarf, that's, that just says that they, they can almost go to the regular walk. Uh, let's see, Blitzers, a couple Blitzers, a Troll Slayer. Those guys are the fun ones. They're, uh, they're supposed to be uh, dwarves that are just so um, fanatical that they're looking for the largest thing to go after and maybe it would, it would kill them. Long beard uh, and a couple long, uh, oh, all the rest of them are long beard. So it looks like they've got a pretty good mixture as well, a couple of each. I don't think they lost anybody the last season. I mean, dwarves usually are pretty steady and they can continue on. You can get, you know, you can get attached to those guys and they're going to last. Oh, it looks like they have two star players. Any of them who have the 16 of the second number, that means they've gone up one level. So JR Jr. Jr.'s Jr. has gone up. I remember he did very well last season. He's got block. Thick Skull, which again, kind of goes with being a dwarf. He's got Tackle and Mighty Blow. Last season he had, he was the MVP one one time, he had three matches. Uh, he's Oh, he's actually killed somebody, he's had, he has one casualty inflicted. Fifteen blocks succeeded, which is common for the dwarves, and three injuries inflicted. Oh, I forgot there was another page. Uh, he's been knocked out once, he's had six blocks sustained and two injuries sustained which is surprising for a dwarf to take injuries. Anyway, and then you have Quackadilly Blip. 
He is, oh, what was, I forgot to look at what he is, actually, but he's got a thick skull, he's got block, and he's got strip ball. Now, that is a, a new ability that he's got, so watch for this guy running up, trying to take the ball from people. Number four of the dwarf team. Uh, he has had, well, there you can see his statistics. He's been MVP once as well. So both of his MVPs have, uh, uh, have gone up in level. Uh, he's had 11 blocks, succeeded, three matches, one casualty inflicted, two injuries uh, sustained, uh, inflicted, and three blocks sustained. All right. So there were... Uh, they, now, strangely enough, these guys came in last last season. They were doing really well, and in fact, actually, they really deserved better, but they typically just couldn't get the win because uh, the Dwarves, I think it has to do with just going slow. They would be beating up the other team. They'd be doing very well, but they just couldn't quite get to the end zone. Also, they had to... Uh, the player had to concede one game because of an emergency, so unfortunately, that took his score down. So he came in last, but he definitely did not do poorly. Uh, he's, he has three team re-rolls, one apothecary, would not that they'll be needed, uh, one fan factor, and that's it. So that's it for the, uh, Thunder Nuts. Now for the two new teams, we have the Chaos Beast Friends. This is, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're, their team value is 1,370, so they are an experienced team from elsewhere coming in to our realm to check us out. Now let's see what they, what, what they're gonna have. If you can't, let's see. If you can't them, then beat them for fun. <laughs> I think it was supposed to be, if you can't beat them, then beat them for fun. But that's, that is a good slogan. I like that. All right, the team roster over here. Oh, wow, they've got a number of MVPs, so watch for them really kicking ass. They're going to be pretty powerful. But, of course, whenever you play against a team that is uh, more powerful than yourself, you can... Uh, you will get uh, benefits for that particular game. So the other players will have benefits whenever they take on uh, the Beast Friends. Uh, Coach is Husker Fan JTM. He is level 8. Wow, he is a he is a powerful one. All right, you've got uh, Kratorg, who is a Minotaur. is one of the MVPs. He's got a thick skull. A mighty Blow. He's got horns. Frenzy. He's a loner, which is a disadvantage to him. A wild animal. And he stands firm. So he's going to be one of the really strong ones. Watch for him wherever he is, just holding his ground. You've also have Ricky, uh, Ricket Da Shish. I'm probably, forgive me, all of you chaos people, if I'm mispronouncing these names. He's got frenzy. So it doesn't look like, you know, he's, he, he is a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, star player, but it doesn't look like he has a lot of the extra abilities. Probably the, his, um, Abilities went up here. Statistics will be... Oh, he's been in... Oh, wow. He's actually been in a number of these. Eight matches, one pass. I know this player has been practicing, and I think that... Because he, he's actually a new player, uh, in, uh, uh, believe it or not. This is the one team that he's played with. He's just... I think it's all been learning matches. Uh, so, yeah. This uh, Ricky... Uh, Ricky Da Shiesh has been an MVP once. He's been in eight matches, one pass. Uh, one touchdown scored, 48 blocks succeeded, three KOs. Well, you can read the rest there. Uh, he's actually been, has some rushing yards. Block sustained, he, yeah, that's going to be probably the largest ones. And uh, he's actually been injured, which is interesting. Let's look at the other ones, actually. I didn't look at his statistics, or at least give you the chance to look at them. 60 blocks su succeeded, dang. So well, he is a terrible, uh, he is a terror, although I think that uh, it said that he had frenzy, so that's probably, you know, it's double. So he, it's been 30 times that he's actually done it, and another 30 just automatically with, uh, oh, with that ability. So, he's actually been blocked, he's actually been KO'd, but he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Alright, let's see, uh, Gishnog, I'm gonna have to go through these a little faster here, or we'll kind of linger on this one team. He's got horns and tackle. And uh, his statistics, he's also been in eight matches. This is what, you know, they're all going to be in. 84 yards running. Wow. So he is going to be a powerhouse running forward. 19 blocks sustained. So it looks like these guys have a really good offense and defense, especially considering uh, that we're only on our second season. Uh, now this one is at a third level, actually. He is Douse Danglemark. One year of career. Chaos Warrior, Beast Friends. is Dauntless. And a dirty player. Well, is there anything but a dirty player in uh, Blood Bowl? It's kind of obvious. All right. 
48, 46 blocks sustained. These guys have a lot of now, of course, in a more, uh, uh, what do you call it, more experienced uh, league, that would be kind of normal, but, you know, compared to what we've been seeing on this, that's quite a lot. That is going to be third level. He is a Chaos Warrior. Uh, let's see, first one was Manitar, second one was uh, Chaos Warrior, Beast Man, and then a Chaos Warrior. All right. Leggy Antler, Beast Man. He's got horns and tackle. And there's his uh, statistics. He's had 40 yards running, so they've got some good uh, yardage runners there for them. He's had 33 blocks sustained. Let's see, was that, where was I? Yeah, Leggy Antler. Ah, uh, Shag Fagor. However, it looks like he has had some damage to him. Look at that, strength has gone down by two, and he's out of it for this first season. He is going to be at third level whenever he comes back, but his strength, wow, is down. Uh, but he is a pro. Once per turn, a pro is allowed to re-roll any one dice roll. Oh, so that's going to make him powerful. He's got the injury. He's, what, smashed collarbone. He's uh, good at tackling. He's got horns. Yeah, horns are good for uh, charging into players. And there's, oh my god, 176 yards running. Two MVPs. This is going to be their massive power player. And it is good for the other pl uh, for the other teams that he is going to be out for that first game. Uh, and there were the star players for the Beast Friends. So the, you know, watch out for them. And it's going to be eight cheerleaders, one apothecary, a seven of a fan factor, and six coach assistants. So this is a very experienced team. I, I told everybody that you can play at whatever level you want because in Blood Bowl it equals out the matches. So if you play against a real experienced team against a non-experienced team, the uh, the game is going to give the non-experienced team uh, more advantages so that it becomes an even game. So this should be okay, plus is the least experienced player for this particular... He's actually played Blood Bowl since it was invented in the 80s, but in this particular uh, Blood Bowl 2, he's never played it before. So it should be... Or except for when he, he's been practicing with that team. So anyway, all right, Puss and Pestilence coaches Torpid Frog, level 1... Short-term pain and long-term agony. Nice. And they have a beautiful team. It looks like it's a fresh team because it's team value exactly 1,000. Take a look at the team roster. Yeah, nobody has experience points, so it'll be interesting when we have Puss and Pestilence against the Beast Friends because you have a totally fresh team against a very experienced team or a, a you know, very experienced for our league. Um, like I say, it, this, the, this will really test... Blood Bowl 2, because Blood Bowl 2 is supposed to even you out no matter where you are. So it'll be really interesting to see them uh, go up against each other. I really like these names. Gazex the Foul, Gurkle, Infectious Ted. <laughs> That's going to be my favorite one. Let's see, Bird Beast and Nurgle. Oh, and this is this guy's pretty. we got to take a look at him. Oh, that is just... That is cute. This isn't a star player or anything. I just had to see him. The, the worm has turned. Oh my. All right. Gurkle, Infectious Ted, Ooze, just, that's his name, Ooze, uh, Lord Shackle Ruthorn, Ew, Kresla, Rotten Guts Larry, <laughs> Rotten Guts Larry, I like that, Matt the, the Fetchlant, Brainless Gregory, Jakar the Swollen, Stinky Steve, and Junk the Moldy. Well, I am really looking forward to seeing what they're like out there. He also has a cheerleader. Oh, I've got to see what their cheerleaders look like. Do they have, no, we're not going to be able to see that yet, but on the, on the field we'll see that. And one team re-roll. All right, so there is uh, there are our teams. Uh, with our next video, we will be starting this. We will be seeing how they are paired up. Uh, this game actually has to get started. I shall actually hit it now. Actually, let me make sure there's nothing else for us to see. Leaderboard, nope, nothing. So let's start this competition. It's action when transfer market is active. Oh, I'm going to have to tr turn that. Close the market. Now let's get this... Uh, Blood Bowl competition going. Oh, it's waiting for the answer from the server, so this might take a moment here, folks. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I was. Uh, what I'd really like to hear is what uh, teams everybody's rooting for. In the comments below, uh, tell us what team you're rooting for and why and what you're interested in seeing. Um, I'm really excited to see how uh, how all of this goes and, uh, you know, certain certain pair-ups and that sort of thing. All right, so here we go. Seattle Slither will be versus Puss and Pestilence. Nurgle's Leftover will, will be against the Sewer Water Sallies, and the Thunder Nuts will be against the Beast Friends. That'll be interesting. You have the uh, the dwarf team that 
came in last last time, but is actually a very solid team going up against the really powerful Beast Friends. So that'll do it for us for this particular episode. Uh, tune in uh, for the next episode where you will actually see these uh, teams going against one another. I'm not exactly sure which of these pairings it'll be, but it'll be one of these three pairings. And I believe it'll be uh, ten episodes total for this season. I'm excited to see how it goes, and I hope you are too. Happy gaming, everybody!